A week of off-field turmoil at Witten Oval. Rodney Eid sacked and the Bulldogs looking to impress the caretaker, Paul Williams, at Amy Stadium. Plenty of talk about the off-field performance of Port Adelaide also, headed for the dreaded spoon. Both teams could only look to next year. A perfect time, perhaps, to make your debut. Tuck the first game, it comes in and kicks a goal. That's how to impress a new coach. The stuff dreams are made of. Could it get any better? Oh, to Higgins. He might do it again. How many are you allowed to have? There you go, bang. Oh. He wasn't the lone goal scorer, but soon he was mentioned amongst immortals. And here he goes again. Could it be three for three? Oh, only Ben Rutten's done that of current day players. He's batting better than Bradman. It was proving a pretty good wicket, hitting Port for six, an avalanche of them. Forced forward by Ward. Where's Tuck? Look for a hand pass. He goes in and he kicks the goal. Port's performance, pathetic. The powers that be pinpointing more than the on-field woes. It was proving difficult to watch. They work it for it. Boyd goes to Ward, and Ward goes with the outside of the boot and kicks a goal. That's 10. Unbelievable. Port Adelaide's darkest quarter of footy, then a sigh of relief. Is it long enough and straight enough? It is. They've got a goal at long last. If a coach ever had a reason to dish up a spray, Matthew Prime has had it. 57 points down at quarter time. He'd get his response. And Butcher, well, this should be a soda. The angle so much easier than previously. He turns around, he's trying to do a tut. And he puts it through. Finally, some spark from the power, but the dogs would immediately bite back. Grant did brilliantly into the path of Hall. Barry goes in and kicks it. He's got two. Port were getting smashed right across Amy Stadium. Banner providing one bright spot. And he rams it home. Well done. 74 points up at half time, and the carnage would continue. There would be no repeat of that first quarter. Cassisi tries to burst his way through. Well done. Hits to Motlop who kicks the goal. The Dogs' first gamer was fast becoming King Tut. There he goes. He kicked four. That'll do me. I've had enough. But King Tut. Second gamer, John Butcher, got himself caught in a dog sandwich. He'd get the wobbly boots and be left seeing stars. But he'd be back to become one himself. This is the hardest pocket in football. It's coming back. Oh, he's three for three. Pick eight in the 2009 draft. Butcher would keep them coming. Butcher's on. Butcher can run in. Tut's got four. Butcher's got four. Tom Logan would come off second best in his battle with Barry's knee. Oh, dear. The man himself would only continue to add to Port's woes. So Barry kicks this. He joins Bill Moore in equal 15th on the all-time list. He's got his four. He's climbing the ladder late in his career. Up by 87, heading into the final quarter, and the Dogs' caretaker coach hadn't even cracked a smile. Surely not even this could cheer his opposite number up. Camped in front of his goes to Banner. Banner goes in and kicks his third. What would please Primus? The performance of John Butcher. Now this is straight in front. This is the one gimme for the day. He's got it. He's got five. He's got a handful, and he's proving to be just that. The dogs seem to have put the cue in the rack and Port accepted the invitation. Cassisi on the left and the captain gets another run. Oh, why didn't they start like this? Butcher would finish with six, but not to be outdone. Could Barry Max Butcher right at the end and kick six? Oh. A much improved Port winning the final quarter, but ten goals the difference in the end. David Murdoch, Big Pond Sport.